Hello friends, my name is Nick and welcome to my weekly devotional. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the bride and the bridegroom. In Revelation chapter 2, Jesus is walking among the lampstands. And in Revelation, the lampstands represent the church or the bride of Christ. A lot of people believe that Revelation is ultimately about the end times, but that not, is not necessarily true. Revelation is ultimately about the return of the king. The beginning of Revelation says, the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus returning in his glory. So why is Jesus walking among the lampstands in chapter 2? Well, if you think about it, and Revelation is ultimately about his return, and the lampstands are the bride, he's walking among the lampstands or the bride to see if she is ready for his return. And if you read chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation, you come to the conclusion very quickly that the bride is not excited and not, not ready for his return. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the bride and the bridegroom visual back in Jesus' day. Because in Jesus' day, the father would actually choose a bride for the son. Okay, I'm sure the son had something to do with the choice. He may have said, hey, daddy, I like that one. Pick that one for me. But ultimately, it was the father's decision to choose a bride for the son. And what would happen was the father and the son would go to this girl's house. And the father would basically say, will you accept my son as your bridegroom? And the girl at this point would have a choice. They would pour a glass of wine. This father would pour a glass of wine. And if the girl did not want the son, she would refuse to take a sip of that wine. If she did want the son as her bridegroom, she would literally take a sip of that wine. And then they entered into a covenant relationship together where they were considered married at this point, even though they didn't come together immediately. So... This is a picture for us because we too have a choice to accept the son. We can either accept him or reject him. And what did Jesus say at the Last Supper? Take drink. This is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. So in communion, what we are saying when we take a sip of that wine is that we are accepting the son as our bridegroom. Well, at this point in time, if the girl did accept the son, they would write a document. The son and the father would write a document called a ketubah. And basically this ketubah would say, the son would say to the bride, I, I promise to love you. I promise to take care of you. I promise to cherish you and provide for you. And at the end of this ketubah, it would say something like this. I promise to return for you. Because what would happen would be the son and the father would actually go back to the father's house. And the son would start preparing a house for the bride. He would start building her a house in his father's house. And so this girl was left with this ketubah, this promise that he would return. So what did Jesus say? He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. So the disciples, when Jesus said that, they would recognize that that was the language of the bridegroom. He was going to prepare a place for her and would return one day to get her. And so when the son was over there preparing a place for his bride, he was focused on her, would he not be? Because he every day he was building this house and he was building it for his bride and every thought would be for her. And back at her house, she was waiting for his return to claim her. And so she would be pouring over the ketubah. What is our ketubah? The Bible. This is our ketubah. This is a promise of his return. So she'd be reading that and pouring over it. She'd be preparing her dress. She'd be planning her hair for the reunion. She'd be so focused on the bridegroom while he was away because she'd be so excited about the reunion. So during their time of separation, both the bride and the bridegroom would immerse in a pool of water. Now, what does this sound like? This sounds like baptism, right? They would die to their old self and rise to their new self. It was basically saying, I have a new life starting now because I'm going to be focused on my bridegroom. I'm going to be pure for him and set apart for him and waiting for him. And the same would go for the bridegroom. They'd be set apart for each other. They were claiming their new life with that water immersion. And that's what we do at baptism. That's what we say. I'm going to, this is my new life. I'm going to start walking a different way. So the bridegroom would ultimately wait for his father to tell him, hey, son, go get your bride. Because only the father knew when he was going to say that to the son. The son didn't know the day of their reunion and neither did the bride. So what does that sound like? You will not know the day and the hour of my return, right? So one day the father would look at the son and say, hey, go get your bride. And the son would then 
go out on the streets and he would they would uh, blast the shofar and the bridegroom's attendants would go behold the bridegroom comes well what does that sound like and in first thessalonians 5 16 it says for the lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of god so that return that jesus ultimate return is going to be met with that shofar blast and that was a visual of what would happen at a wedding ceremony so this, this, this bridegroom would come and they would march through the streets. It would be a big celebration. And the bride would hear that shofar and she would know, hey, my bridegroom's coming for me. And she'd jump up and she'd get her wedding gown on and she'd prepare her hair. And by the time the bridegroom knocked on her door, she was ready to go to the father's house. She was ready to go back with him. Okay. So this is a lesson for us today. What should we be doing while we await for the bridegroom? Well, we should be pouring over that ketubah. We should be hungry for the promises of his return. We should be excited about the reunion. We should be ready for it. But what Jesus finds when he walks among the lampstands in Revelation chapter 2, the bride's not ready. So we need to ask ourselves, are we? So, Think about that as you move forward through the week. I hope that has blessed you in some form or fashion, and I will see you back here next week.